All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our sixth edition BCBA task list series, where we are going through each individual task list item and breaking it down into what we believe you need to know to pass your exam. We're continuing with A and A4, Distinguish Among Behaviorism, Experimental Analysis of Behavior, ABA, and Professional Practice. Although we use ABA to broadly describe many things in our field, we do want to know the distinction between these four areas. And so that's what we're going to break down today. As always, like and subscribe for all of our updates. Check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com for all of our study materials. When you pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. Let's get going. So although we use ABA to broadly describe many things in our field, there are four distinct areas that we want to recognize and understand because each area serves a purpose for our science. So we're going to go through each one of these one by one. And those are behaviorism, experimental analysis of behavior, applied behavior analysis, and professional practice. Now, behaviorism is going to be our philosophy. We adhere to radical behaviorism. This is how we think about behavior. Experimental analysis of behavior, think along the lines of B.F. Skinner when we're doing laboratory controlled research, often on animals. Applied behavior analysis is more human research applied to important behaviors. And then professional practice, this is our actual service delivery. Again, we use ABA typically to describe almost all of these things. Before your exam, especially, you want to know the distinction. So let's start with behaviorism. Behaviorism is our philosophy. It guides our science. Think about when behaviorism was started and we were thinking along the lines of methodological behaviorism. We then moved on to radical behaviorism with B.F. Skinner. And from that shift, we introduced things like private events into our analysis. So behaviorism is a theory. It's a guide. It's a philosophy of what behavior means in our world. This is how we think about behavior in our world. So one way to think about it is think about the assumptions we make about our universe, things like empiricism and determinism, and then think about our dimensions of behavior analysis, right? Things like being effective and applied and analytic. These are all kind of rooted in our philosophy because our philosophy is going to guide our interventions. It's going to guide our assessments. It's going to guide our treatment planning because we're going to take that philosophy and then run with it in order to provide what we're going to talk about, the best professional practice possible. Another concrete example is the introduction of private events. The difference in philosophy between methodological and radical behaviorism was a lot and or mainly focused on these private events. Should they or should they not be included in the analysis of behavior? So if you're thinking about behavior in our world and what is behavior and how we assess behavior and think about behavior, that is behaviorism. Now, experimental analysis of behavior, which most of you likely won't take part in. This is very tightly controlled experimentation. We often think about it in terms of experiments on animals like pigeons or rats. When we think about early ABA and ABA principles and behavior principles that we use now, those were all founded in the lab. B.F. Skinner was using his pigeons to look at things like reinforcement and extinction. And when we talk about ABA next, we took what B.F. Skinner found, those principles, and applied them in real human situations. So this is experimentation that is done in tightly controlled settings, typically on animals. We're not necessarily in the real world tackling real socially significant behavioral problems yet. B.F. Skinner, for example, had his pigeons in his cage with his switches, and he was reinforcing, he was putting on extinction, and he was observing and measuring the effect on those pigeons. So B.F. Skinner and other early behaviorists really were involved in this EAB, this experimental analysis of behavior, which is very important because it established our fundamental principles, things like reinforcement, extinction, and punishment. So the focus is more on 
functional relationships between variables. How does A affect B, for example, rather than applied uses for our science, right? How can we use this in a classroom setting? When we want to think about a classroom or a home or a grocery store or wherever real life takes place, now we're thinking about ABA. This is what the majority of you will engage in in your careers. You're going to spend your career thinking about how we can apply behavior principles to socially significant real life, real world settings. So you might be asking, what's the difference between ABA and practice guided by ABA? ABA in this context is still essentially research. When you have a client and you design an intervention, all you're doing is an experiment. You're researching if that intervention is, is effective. Your Typically, your technician is going to take data for you, and you're going to analyze that data and decide how well that intervention is at what you're trying to accomplish. So essentially, you are a researcher for each of your clients. You are designing and assessing and using all these behavior principles to create behavior plans and behavior interventions that are then going to be implemented in practice by the technician. So understand that distinction, right? This is essentially research and experimentation on humans for behaviors of social significance. We're taking what was learned in the lab and applying it to behaviors of social significance. You're designing interventions. You're measuring those outcomes because you have technicians typically implementing and providing that service. So this is a systematic application of our science to help people. We are looking at what works and what doesn't to help people. Now, finally, professional practice guided by ABA. This is what our technicians are doing. Do we also implement directly sometimes as behavior analysts? Of course, right? But typically it's going to be a technician who's going to go in and perform service delivery. Now, if you're parent training, for example, that could be professional practice guided by ABA. Supervision, training of ABA practitioners is all professional practice guided by what we've learned in our experiment and research. You're going to write the treatment plan, the service delivery person, whoever that might be, is going to implement it in practice. You're going to evaluate it, and it's going to go back and forth. Whatever you find through your experimentation in ABA is then going to go into your plan, which is then going to be directly implemented in professional practice. So think behavior technicians, direct implementation by behavior analysts, and other service providers who are using behavior analytic, me analytic methods to help others. Our focus is on evidence-based practices, which we are founding through ABA and EAB, and our focus on ethical service delivery. So to sum it up, behaviorism is the philosophy and foundation of our science. It's what we believe, we are radical behaviorists, we are looking at both public and private events, it is our philosophy of human behavior. EAB is the initial research into those principles we use today. So think B.F. Skinner, controlled labs, animals like pigeons. ABA is that application of those principles to socially significant behavior. Think behavior research with humans, or think when you have a client and you're measuring and taking data and experimenting with your interventions. And then finally, professional practice is the culmination of it all. We've taken everything we've learned, we've taken all our research, all our time, and applied it to a plan that can be then delivered to clients. All right, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for all of our updates. We put out three BCBA videos a week, plus all of our RBT content, which we hope you will recommend to your RBT or future RBT friends. When you pass your exam, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. See you soon.